What's going on, everybody, and welcome to episode 13 of Wrecked by Creebuild, the episode where I don't touch the motorcycle. Can I do this backwards? Nope. Back with another episode of Wreck Bike Rebuild. Uh, we were gone for a little bit for two weeks because, you know, marriages and honeymoons and stuff like that, but we are back. And if you guys are big fans of the Wreck Bike Rebuild series, then you know that this is the episode I take the bike to Mountain Motorsports and they are going to do all the extra stuff that I am not capable of doing. Like taking this old exhaust off and putting on a new one, replacing this shock with something that's actually worth a shit doing the scheduled maintenance for this thing because it's expensive as shit at the mileage that it's at. Adding new brake pads because stopping is important. And generally going over the motorcycle to make sure I didn't screw everything up too much because they are professionals and I am pretty much the opposite of a professional. Also very important for this episode. You know it's important when I grab a chair and I roll it over the camera and I talk to you. All right, so if you're watching this episode, this is episode like 13, you are probably aware of how this series goes, but this is a YouTube series that is funded by my people over on Patreon. You can uh, buy a $1, $3, or $5 per episode level, and for that, you get access to the community over there. You can like conversate with us about what to do on the bike but you also get a chance at being gifted the bike once the entire series is over. Now, if you're watching this episode, this is episode 13. It's very important that you understand, episode 14 is the last episode you will get a chance to win this motorcycle. And you can do that for a dollar. I want everybody to know that if you want a chance, next episode is the very last one. If episode 14 is already posted when you're watching this video, then this bike is already like done, wrapped up, given away, and given off to somebody. But I wanted to make sure that everybody that wanted a chance to get this motorcycle gets, you know, whatever level you wanted to purchase at. You don't have to, like this video is going to be totally free, but I wanted to make sure that everybody was clear about that because I don't want anybody saying, oh, I thought there's a couple more episodes. 14, last one, get on the Patreon page, link in the description very quickly so you have a chance. Okay, one more thing. So guys, before we go over to Mountain Motorsports to get the bike loaded up, I wanted to kind of remind everybody who might be new to the series or something like that, where the series kind of started from. This whole series was my idea to learn how to work on a motorcycle. And I found this amazing website called Dash Hub. They basically allow you to buy wrecked and salvaged motorcycles for stupid cheap. I got the bike you see behind me for $2,800. Now you can go back and watch episode one. That's where the bike started from. And we've built it up to what it is now. Thanks to the guys on Patreon. Thanks to Dash Hub. And they're actually the sponsor of this video. So thank you, Dash Hub. But I highly recommend you guys checking Dash Hub out. If you like tinkering on your bike or if you're like me and you want to learn, it is a fantastic option for you to get like a lower price motorcycle and then you have the extra capital to build it up to something you want it to be. I've been able to build this monster into something that I was just dreaming of when I first got it. So I uh, highly recommend those guys. Thank you for sponsoring this episode Dash Hub. Now we're going to get the bike loaded onto the trailer, taking Mountain Motorsports, and we're going to let some professionals work on this thing. I'm going to take you guys along with me though. It should be a phenomenal time. Let's go. Before we take it in, I just want you guys to see what the bike looked like before Mountain Motorsports touched it. Everything is there. Minus this. You know, kind of looking at the bike right now, I feel honestly pretty good about myself. From a guy that doesn't know what he's doing to get a bike to that point, from what it did look like, here's a clip of what the bike used to look like. Right? Pretty different. I'm pretty happy with myself. I'm pretty excited to see the transition of what it looks like after Mountain Motorsports. So let's, let's go, man. I'm ready. Guys, I just realized that I think this is going to be the last time the monster gets taken off the lift. 
nostalgia. All those beautiful times and all the headaches and everything. It's now over. Gosh, time flies. And now, my friends, is the last time you're going to see me sketchily get the monster off the lift. Let's go to Mountain Motorsports. All right, so we made it to Mountain Motorsport, so I gotta go in and figure out uh, where the hell to take this thing. So, you stay right there. <laughs> It hasn't seen daylight, but today, like today's the first day it's been out in the wild. Ta-da! Looks good. Thanks, man. It's gonna look way better when you guys are done. <laughs> like when it has an exhaust on it? Yeah, and uh, you know, all the little bits and pieces. I'm still gonna, I'm gonna have to get this powder coated, the kickstand, and I wanna get this whole top part powder coated black, okay. but I'm just gonna do that after you guys are done with it, cause I oh, you want to do like the whole upper clamp or just the handlebar holder? Just the handlebar holder. holder. Yeah. Yeah, let's get this thing out. Do you guys see all the stuff I have in here? Jesus Christ. Okay, they might need this. Those are LEDs. Nuts. Those are turn signals. There's this. This thing. Does it look at the exhaust too? That thing's loud as shit. Dude, wait till you hear it when it's around. Kind of scary. Oh, she empty. What's going on, everybody? So uh, here is the monster. We are here at Mountain Motorsports. They cannot work on it until tomorrow, though. So I'm going to swipe the camera, and it's going to be tomorrow for you guys, and that's when we're going to film it. I've been talking to the techs, and we might not be able to finish everything in one day. So we might have to be part one and part two. I'm not going to charge two episodes, though. I'm not going to like charge on my Patreon people. So you guys might get a free episode next week, but. It's looking like there might be part one and part two. We'll know for sure tomorrow when we get to filming. Oh God, there's an R6 over there with its head taken off. Sweet Jesus. Okay, cut to day two. Oh God, cut to day two after this poor freaking R6. Jesus Christ. Looks like Chase on two wheels is riding that thing or something. Eey. What's going on everybody? Welcome to day two of, uh, wait, day two of part one of Mountain Motorsports working on the bike. I'm gonna, uh, I just got here, it's like early in the morning, and we're about to film the motorcycle getting worked on. I'm gonna stop being a white girl with my Starbucks and uh, go film some cool stuff with professionals doing stuff on my motorcycle. Should also probably shut my Jeep door. So while I'm waiting for the tech to get done doing the, he's working on another bike and before he can work on the monster, I figured in the meantime, we can look at what monsters look like when they're brand new. Do you guys see what they do with the gas tanks now? They have like a little latch. That's how you get the gas tank off now. After that terrible travesty that they did, 
with the 2009s. I think this is a, what is this, a 16? Might be, 17. Think of all these, I choose one of these guys. What is this? 1200S. I like the gold. So while we wait on uh, the bike to get worked on, we'll chill in here. I keep having to readjust this little mask thing because like... That's right. Uh, Mountain Motorsports in Roswell in their, I guess, their waiting room literally has Chase on two wheels just playing. Hey, it's starting out so good already. That's so hilarious because the that Ducati is literally in the back right now. That's, that's pretty dope. That's where all my views come from. That thing. I want that. How do I... Can I... I don't know if I can do this. That might be the coolest. Okay, Shoei X14. I'm looking this helmet up right now because that might be the coolest profile on a helmet I've ever seen in my life. Do you guys see that? safe to say that uh, the monster is not the only cool Ducati here in the garage. There's more money in motorcycles right there than I currently own in my entire life. So guys, I'm sitting here looking at the monster, but look at this scrambler. Like, look how everything is just like bunched in right inside the frame. That's really cool. Let me know if you guys want me to get a scrambler next. We're working on that. Now are these handlebars where you want them? Because they're hitting the tank. Uh, no, not at all. Oh, that'll do it. What? That's supposed to be your steering stop. So do you just adjust that, or is that like a well, broken part? It's broken now. It used to be adjustable at one point in time. Gotcha. Yeah, see what see it's, it's supposed best. to look like this one. Oh, okay, so it's, it's just like, like a nut and a screw type thing, yeah. but still like... So we'll have to get another one of those. Okay. I will see, this whole time I've been wondering why it does that. It doesn't... It still wants to turn a lot that way, though. Well, it also has aftermarket bars on it, uh, okay. so they're a little bit lower. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, time for uh, B-roll and uh, fun stuff. I'm going to jump back on this camera and update you if anything happens, but I think we're just tearing the bike down. Not, not we, like, I'm not doing it, but they are. that that is not a wood cutting blade is it no i'm not saying i've ever cut wood with a metal cutting blade of course i wouldn't do anything like that but two minutes in we've already got an evened out handlebar and um cut down nuts Moving quick. Oh, you got an electric one. 
Yeah, yeah it's actually nice. hard to find a standard one now. You could see the numbers, which yeah. makes it nice. Yeah. If the numbers continue to climb, <laughs> you're good. Yeah. If you're turning and Got you get numbers. like yeah. 10, 15 degrees of rotation and the numbers either don't climb or start to drop, stop. You're right. That's how you break stuff. You That's only with an electric torque wrench. Wow, these are high. The uh, rear sets? The rear sets are real high for a monster. Yeah, uh, they were... They feel pretty good. I'm short, so they're in a good spot for me. What are you... I'm 5'10". 5'5", five, 5'6". Five, five, oh, uh, gotcha. So for you, you're probably scrunched up a bit more. Yeah, I have not sat on that bike fully yet. Like this? Nope. You, you might be the first person to sit on the bike like that. Sweet. because I, I think I torqued these things down correctly. They're definitely at least tight enough. Yes. They may be slightly over torqued, but a little over is better than... You know what they say, better over torqued than under torqued. I'm so, I've, I am way more proud right now than I should be. I torqued four bolts correctly, guys, out of the hundred-ish that are in there. You know, just casually. I respect all of my gear, obviously, but you know what? Oh my god. Okay, B roll time. Oh my god. Ladies and gentlemen, we have news, and I think it's bad. So, what are you saying? Um, there are two pinch bolts in the bottom of the forklift. Yes. One of them, uh -huh. nice and tight. The other one? Gotcha. Nobody home. Oh. So okay. So what does that mean, um, layman's terms? Something I would understand. Uh, the threads that the bolt go into have now been pulled out of the fork. Oh. Oh. So there's no threads left in there. Gotcha. And the way this is designed it's going to be extremely difficult to repair. As in like get a like re right. Um, because the bolt goes through a hole. Yeah. And then into the threads. Oh, okay. So there's really no way to Oh, it's fork oil. That's Forks the best of the things that could be, right? Yeah. Okay. So not a huge deal. Not not a deal. So that being said, if your forks are leaking, and you're going to have to replace your fork seals, then really the only way to repair uh, this bottom section is to replace it. Okay. Now, when we replace the bottom section, now I'm not sure whether you're going to be able to get just this piece. Okay. Uh, or if it'll have to be the entire inner leg gotcha. of the fork that's going to have to be replaced. That's something we're going to have to. Look out. and find out okay. what parts are available, uh, whether gotcha. you can get just a lower lower or if you're going to have to get the whole inner okay. fork tube to do that. Gotcha. <clears throat> but so if the fork's got to come apart, yeah. then it'll be it's a, not a, big a perfect time to do it. Instead yeah. of having to take it apart just to do that, okay. if everything else going on that needs to be addressed, you can address both things at the same time. Gotcha. So I need to figure out if I can get this bottom fork piece. Yes. Okay. Um, and then we'll go from there. Okay. This piece itself. So I don't think you're going to be able to get this, especially being that it's Ducati. Um, so it's probably going to have to be the whole inner leg. And we're also going to need uh, oil seal, dust seal for the fork. So the fork right. Cool. Thank you. Yep. Luke is the guy that helps me get things for this motorcycle. So me and him are going to be having a conversation real quick. We might have an extra episode on our hands, ladies and gentlemen, because that's not good at all. It is weird that I planned on getting new forks originally and then scrapped the idea. That idea is now back on the table. Crap. And that's going to be another episode. Let me think of ideas. You get the complete left slider. Oh. They don't even sell the inner outer tube? You have to get a whole leg? No, no, no. That's what I'm saying. Oh, you have to get the inner. 
Wait, so you found just the little bottom black it's, thing? It's this whole piece. No. You have to get it's the inner. This is one piece. This and this. One piece. Oh. Wait, yeah. so this Complete thing slider. is... Like, this is one yes, thing? this is one piece. No they're shit! They're actually... They're screwed together. Okay. Um, and then there's usually a, a set screw or a grub screw or a roll pin or something that yeah. holds it in place. Yeah. Um, normally, you can heat it up because I use, like, killer Loctite to put the two together. Okay. Um... So normally you can heat them up and take apart with two. Yeah. Um, but but that doesn't mean that they sell them that way. I, said, I don't think I've ever seen anyone sell them without the. If you go to the Met, like if you go to Showa, you can oh, get that piece. Okay. But yeah, oh, but not yeah. The, like, If you go to Orange, here. you can get that piece. Interesting. Okay, so. thank you, sir. Yeah. Good job, Luke. Keep killing. I didn't want to like you know I have like the I'm, I'm Green this, Lantern. So oh. Well, could have caught that on camera and look cool and I'd have put it on YouTube as a viral hit. <laughs> Alright, so Luke's gonna go look and see how much all that's costing and I will let you guys know. Um, and we'll go from there. What it's gonna look like is they're probably gonna have to order that and uh, we'll have to do, we might have to do more than just part one and two with this stuff because that's a pretty big deal. So, uh, whenever we find more out, I will let you guys know. Even out of my hands, the monster is still fighting. Okay. Individually, but a set. Yeah. So wow. like just a metric set. Yeah. Would probably be like 200, 250 bucks. At first, I thought you meant like a set, like just oh, one, one of, of those. The, no, no, no. This I was like this that better be made of adamantium or something. This set was like close to four hundred dollars. Right. Speaking of lots of money. Luke, how much are we? Uh, how much are we on for? I'll just hand you that. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna go uh, have a panic attack and die. $860 because one screw decided to kill itself? <sighs> do you mean cool or do you mean terrible? You can actually see these little tiny air bubbles. Oh, that's terrible, yeah. That's bad news. That's how I break, typically. There's a lot in there. Yeah. I get. I want you guys to keep in mind this technique when bleeding your rear brakes. Pro, pro tip. That looks, that looks like liquid. Yes, it does. Where is she coming from? That's a good question. That might be where the air is coming from too, wherever that's leaking out, the air is leaking in. Ah, okay, okay. So we have uh, brake fluid leaking. We're thinking it's the banjo bolt not uh, torqued to the specific degree. Yep, it's coming from the banjo. Huh? It's an old style ABS pickup where it actually has the pin on the rotor. Uh -huh. uh, the newer ones have uh, like the ring with all the slashes in it goes yeah. all the way around. Yeah. That's a newer style. Ah. It's that much more frequently does it read. Oh, so this only reads like once every five, five times of rotation? Uh, there's a pin like every other bolt. So oh. it probably reads like three times per rotation instead of 80. Yeah. Yeah. But it's an older bike and the ECU can't handle all that information. So 
Oh, we haven't even got into what we're supposed to be doing yet. That was just the once over. So uh, now the serious work begins. That was just the generic, uh, Chase probably messed this up. Let's check it. And so the rest of this stuff is all gonna turn into one massive job. Yep. So the bike is pretty much gonna have to get torn to pieces mm -hmm. and then reassemble with all the new stuff on it. Knowledge. From here, I mean, it's gonna be head down 10 hours. Yeah. But all in all, doesn't look too bad. Doesn't look too bad. Too bad. In quotes on the screen. <laughs> doesn't look too bad. All right. There's your uh, Monster 1100 <laughs> quality check. All right, guys. So you're going to be seeing Brian a little more. Brian, thank you for uh, looking it over. See you he later. is going to be destroying this thing down and building it like a professional person. Unlike others of us. I guess I had to come out here because it is loud as hell in there. Uh, so today was, I guess, the once over. Uh, they're not going to go on to the next part because it's already like 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And they're looking at like 10 to 12 hours of tearing the bike down. So we're going to start that on Tuesday. That'll be for you guys part two of uh, getting all that stuff done. I'm not going to charge for part two because I don't want that many. Like, it's. I wanted this to be one episode. It's not going to be able to be one episode. So uh, next Tuesday, we're going to show part two of this episode where we're tearing the entire monster down. So uh, that should be pretty exciting. Uh, and that's about it for this episode. Shout out to um, the sponsor for this video, the Dash Hub. Those guys are absolutely awesome. Not only do they have motorcycles, but they've got like ATVs, cars, trucks, and all kinds of stuff. So make sure to check out Dash Hub. Uh, they were awesome enough to sponsor this episode uh i'm gonna go grab the rest of my camera gear and get the hell out of here i will see you guys in the next episode thank you for supporting this one also make sure to jump down in patreon you've got like one episode left to get this bike if you want it last warning i'm giving you guys if you want it so it is getting professionally put together now anyway i'll see you guys next week later